Hello everybody. So, if you're following this channel, you know I'm writing a story, Onti Tolls the VIMMORPG, and I'm getting very fluent in saying the title of my own novel. Great! This story is about Flora, an engineer who is getting into the virtual world. In the virtual world, there are worlds or scenarios with strong sci-fi elements and technical elements. So there is the need for hacking. So you can do the hacking in the game in a different game modes. There are generally three game modes, an automatic mode where you trust a passenger in your own body and the system does the job for you. This is if you're an absolute beginner or are afraid of something, like you can't swim at all and you don't like water, you say you customize that swimming is automated and then you just say, system, please swim in this direction. The system does the actual movements for you. Then half automated, you do the movements, but the game system corrects them a bit and makes them better, more smoother, like um, if you want to dodge, so the system helps you a bit with it. You have to dodge yourself, but the system nudges you, let's say nudges you. The third mode is the manual mode. You transmit your brain waves and your um, connections of your nervous systems to the game and the game interprets it as motion or thoughts or speak or because you are lying stationary in a pot and all the motions you do are practically translated translations of your thoughts and of the connections of your nervous systems. Then for some abilities like hacking there is a special mode, the mini game mode. So you don't have to do all that script stuff yourself or let it do the system through automatic mode. No, um, there is another layer atop of the actual hacking and this layer is represented as a mini game. In manual mode, the hacking is transmitting your scripts to your electric lockpick and uh, the lockpick attacks the firewall. So you're busy, busy with loading scripts, um, attacking scripts, defending scripts, different kind of scripts and the firewall is busy with defending and attacking your scripts. In the minigame mode, the scripts are represented by little stick figures. And these stick figures are knights with shields. These are the defenders or tanks, um, attackers, melee attackers and ranged attackers. These are the three types of um, stick figures under level 25. Above level 25 there will be mages with AOA uh, damage and um, healers as well and may maybe traps for the defenders and um, assassins with uh, stealth capabilities. So I've got a lot of ideas but first I have to be sure how the mode below level 25 works with just uh, the three types of scripts. The amount of scripts you can have active is limited by your hacking ability and below 25 these are maximal uh, 15 scripts. And um, how fast you can deploy them is dependent on your dexterity value. This includes how fast you, the scripts respawn. Respawning scripts mean you load them again into um, the lockpick. So uh, this is uh, depending on ha hacking. And uh, the other aspect, like how uh, fast you can deploy them, is in games called initiative. So um, there is uh, in 
initiative probability, which is skewed towards the defender because they are standing on a high wall in the mini game. So they got an initiative a bonus. At the moment, I thought of three points, but uh, let's uh, speak about the board first. So I want to play it on an 8x8 grid. This is, these are the dimensions of a chessboard, so I can play it with my friends and test it out. And you know, why not start with uh, something common everybody is familiar with? I can change it anytime I want if it doesn't work out with um, 8x8. The defenders will start um, at one end and the attackers in the graphic I show you it's the upper end and uh, the, the um, hacking part will start on the lower end and you see that uh, the defenders or the fireball has um, some additional fields. This is the castle wall where um, you can position ranged attackers on them. The defenders start on the lower end. The goal for the hackers is to destroy this door. It can only be destroyed by melee attacks. So if your tanks don't have any melee attacks, then you have to get one of the melee attackers to this door to destroy it. Now how they can move. Let's start with the protectors. The protectors can move vertically and horizontally, one field per round. And at the same time they can protect in the same round. They can protect the same fields they can move to, so the field above them, the field below them, the field right and left. The melee attackers, they, I will um, call them attack melee, because melee attackers is MA, and MA could be mage as well, so I don't want to confuse it. So the attackers will start with an A, AR for attack ranged, and AM for attack melee. And a melee attacker can uh, move in all the eight directions, one field, and attack in the same round if the field they attack is adjective, adjective to uh, the field they are in or the field they move to. The range attackers, they can either move or attack. And there is a... I'm not sure about if it stays this way, but at the moment there is a minimum range for attacking. So they can't attack people on the field next to them, but um, they can attack on um, a straight line. And not only a straight line, but a line left and right as well and if they're standing on the wall even the line next to this line because on the wall you have a higher reach oh and if you ask yourself why are your graphics so ugly that has two reasons first i like ugly graphics <laughs> second it is explained in my story it has a it has a reason why they look like a bad taste RPG party. All right, these are the capabilities of the scripts. Remember, the scripts are the figures of the of the game. So in my test runs, I had two different scripts. The Firewall only had attacker ranged and these are the attributes of the attacker ranged. So it has uh, the maximal attack of 5 and the standard health of 5. 
Then I had uh, melee attackers with an attack of 5 and standard health of 5 and protectors slash tanks. The maximum of defense you can have is 4 plus 1 extra health. Uh, 1 extra health is worth um, 2 um, points. So uh, a sum of 7 health. And I pl we played with um, 6 figures each. And I used 4 tanks, 1 Re one melee attacker, uh, attacker melee, and one attacker ranged. This isn't the optimal configuration, but we are one for testing. So you can configure your scripts yourself if you are a hacker, <laughs> and of course you are uh, for this game. So let's uh, say you want your attacker ranged to be a bit more tanky, so you can give them uh, one extra defense. Attack versus defense and versus health is uh, really simple at the moment. So if you attack for five and the other stick figure has four defense, then one point damage will be taken by the figure you have targeted. So um, if you configure your ranged attacker with 4 against someone with a defense of 4, it makes plung and you can't damage them. Keep that in mind. So the amount of points you can spend is dependent on the quality of your scripts. If the rating of your script is A, and I played only with um, A ratings at the moment, you can spend 5 points. If it's B rated, you can spend only 4 points. This makes it really difficult for lower rating script to scripts to contend against higher rating scripts. If their protector has a um, higher defense rating than uh, you are able to attack for, it will be a very, very, very hard game for you. <laughs> Thankfully, these scripts are allowed to be traded uh, in my game, in the marketplace, so you can buy yourself very cheap A-rated uh, scripts for S-rated. You have to pay a bit more. But uh, the maximum is 5 for every, except for defense, 4. If I have an S-rated protector uh, script, I can only do it in health. Or I can give my protector an uh, attack or ranged capability, because a protector has on one hand his shield, but his other hand is free. So, <laughs> so you can have attack or ranged capabilities, but it still can only move like a protector. And if it's busy, busy with um, shooting, it can't protect at the same round. So you have to be um, a bit smart about it. But to give some extra defense to range um, attackers or melee attackers is totally viable and uh, smart because they will hold out longer. A not defended, not protected uh, range attacker, um, they go down with one shot in this kind of configuration because the attacker on the other side makes 5 damage and you only have a health of 5, so um, you're dead with one shot. If we leave it like this, I'm very tempted to add crit, <laughs> because you have to give some options. Yeah, but just a thought, so crit might be an interesting attribute to 
to throw into this uh, mix. <laughs> Well, we have uh, now, as a, we have spoken about the capabilities of the scripts and their attributes. So before each game, you have to define what are my scripts, what are they capable of. You can run multiple scripts of the same type, of course. I don't want to make a maximal script amount the amount of scripts you can run simultaneously is uh, your hacking ob but not the the difference so you can if you have hacking six you can run two of each uh, script or uh, like i did four protectors one range and one melee attacker um, but if you want, you can run six different scripts so that you make like a protector who has um, some range capabilities. Why not? Okay, yeah. So you can have one protector besides one um, ranged attacker and the protector will protect the range attacker as well um, if uh, he can't shoot or if somebody is near him or if it's strategically advisable. <laughs> Good, now to the stats of the hacker and the firewall. So the amount of points in hacking, I have already mentioned this. This translates in the amounts of figures into the play. And it also translates into the amount of points the little door has. This little door here. The amount of dexterity translates into the initiative. So there have I have both uh, four. This means they have an initiative of four, but the firewall has a bonus initiative. You can um, set the amount yourself. I thought about uh, three points and how to dice it. You can use any um, dice and just say oh, okay ch just from from one to four counts or you can say okay we roll just um, a normal dice and add three points for the firewall on the initiative um, to the points rolled. I also thought that um, I give the hacker the probability from 1 to 4 and the firewall from 1 to 7. So um, to dice this with a um, d4 and this with a d7. This is d7s are of course, of course only possible in uh, software programming and there are no real d7s out there, I think. <laughs> yeah, but at the moment let's leave it undefined. So, uh, the round system. So I'm not sure yet if I want the to let the player decide which stick figure he moves at his initiative or if each um, stick figure throws the initiative at the same time, throws like in dice, you know, <laughs> tabletop roleplay games, at the same time, and then um, we will go the initiative from the highest to the lowest. I mean, this could be very skewed to the defender because uh, the defender got the initiative bonus, so it can be that he, uh, the firewall gets the first five uh, moves and um, the attackers are 
the hackers are dead before they even <laughs> have the chance to do something. So I think it's more realistically to say the firewall has a move and then the hacker has a move or you uh, throw initiative and one of them starts first and then uh, the next section starts with the next stick figure, the next script and it will be determined who starts first uh, then. What I don't like about it is that it's not that realistic if someone has higher dexterity his advantage will stack up and if I determine the initiative with each section and not each round then um, the initiative won't stack up so if I determine with each round I can implement a stacking up mechanism mu much more easy. Okay, maybe the se this issue is separate. So for our first version, let's say we change with each se section and um, the player can determine which script will react first, will react at any point. Like in check you in chess, you can um, choose with which figure you want to move. I think that might made, make the game more interesting. I think that were the, that were uh, the rules. So uh, yeah, if you want if you want to get uh, play it with me, contact me. I'm sure we can work out some way to play it via Discord or um, or via real life, if you know me in real life. And I'm really looking forward to ironing out all the kinks and rules of my game. I maybe write a chapter, a bonus chapter on the rules in my story if I got a bit of writer's block in the NaNoWriMo time, so in November. Good! See you for the next video and bye bye!